Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for a special Hour of Code video chat to celebrate Computer Science Education Week. Joining us this year is Kevin Systrom. Kevin is the co-founder and CEO of Instagram, a photo sharing app all of us know that millions all over the world use to keep connected. So please join me in welcoming Kevin. <laughs> Awesome. That was the nicest reception I've ever gotten. Thank you. <laughs> we practiced. <laughs> All right. right. So we're going to go to school number one, West Jefferson Middle School in Colorado. Oh, I think you're still muted. You're still muted. I can see an icon, yeah. All right, thank you. Our question is, why do you think it's important to learn code even if you don't think you'll become a computer programmer? Yeah, of course. Well, first off, I have to say I love your uh, bow tie because we have Tie Tuesdays here at the office, um, and w basically everyone wears ties on Tuesday. It's an awesome tie. Great job. Um, okay, so awesome question, too. Um, uh, I think it's important to learn to code because it helps you structure your thinking differently. It's kind of like learning math. Um, it's not clear that in the future, every day you wake up and you do math problems on a piece of paper, but it certain helps, certainly helps you think about the world differently. Um, when you're thinking about how to structure a problem, how to break up the problem into component parts, and then how to sequence your work on that problem, I think that's what computer programming helps you do the most. Um, for me, What's really interesting is I don't do any coding anymore, um, although I wish I did, and maybe I'll get back into it. Um, for me, it really helps because I can talk to engineers and I can talk to designers in the language that they use every single day. So even if you're going to be a designer, if you're going to be a marketing person, if you're going to be in PR, you need to have a shared and common language with engineers if you're going to work in Silicon Valley. So learning to code also helps you do that. I would say those are the two main components. Awesome. So we're going to move to North Shore Middle School in Wisconsin. And they have their entire sixth grade students all in the library. So we're going to have two questions from them. How and why do you think Instagram reached so many users so quickly? Great. I'll answer that one, uh, I'll answer that one first. Um, well, the honest truth of it is that it actually took a very, very long time for Instagram to get where it is. Uh, if you count all the days since having the idea to where we are today, uh, it's been nearly six years. So uh, if you think about it, how old were you six years ago? Um, that's when Instagram started. So, um, you know, initially we only had about 100 people using it, and... The funny thing is, most of those people told us that the app wasn't really going to work, not many people would like it, um, that it needed more features, that it needed other stuff, uh, and, and we believed them, so we kept working on it. Um, but when we launched it worldwide, it kind of took off and had 25,000 people sign up the first day. Um, I think that's because people really wanted their photos to look interesting, because phones at the time, I don't know if you guys remember this, but the first iPhone... Um, the camera wasn't actually all that good. So Instagram's filters made pe people's pictures go from being um, kind of boring and blurry to interesting and artsy. And that was a need in the market at the time. Uh, so people started telling their friends, hey, if you use this app, you can make your photos look really interesting and cool. And then over the course of you know six months or so, we added a million people to the app, which was an astounding number to us. Um, and now, five years later, and, and by the way, five years is quite a long time, uh, we now have over 400 million people using it every single month. Um, and for those of you who study geography, you'll realize uh, 400 million is a larger number than the number of people in the United States. We actually, about 70% of the people who use Instagram are overseas um, and don't use Instagram in English. Um, so you, really Instagram is, is an international network and I think it's scaled that quickly because you don't have to read to use Instagram, you don't have to understand English, 
um, people can connect just because they're seeing each other's images. And uh, images are this universal language uh, that everyone speaks or, in this case, sees. I think that's partially why Instagram scaled so quickly, um, even though it took five years. What was the second question? Um, what was the in what was the inspiration for the Instagram logo? And the app's various trademarks, like the square-shaped photo, boomerang, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for asking. Great question. Um, so initially, uh, I uh, so when you get to college, sometimes they allow you t uh, to study overseas. So they say, if you want to take six months, you can go study uh, abroad, it's called. And I decided to study in Italy. So I took art history classes and photography classes in Italy. Um, and when I was there, this was long before Instagram launched, I uh, was taking photos with a camera that used square film. It was an antique camera called a Holga camera. Um, and as I used that, I kind of fell in love with the square aesthetic, um, the square aspect ratio. Uh, of film because it was a lot easier to frame things in. It was easier to make a good looking photo with square. Um, and filters actually came from the idea that when I was developing the film, the way you used to do it was that you actually shined a light through the film onto a piece of paper and then put that paper in chemicals to develop the print. Um, and you could change the colors by adding extra chemicals to that, that chemical bath and it would kind of shift the colors. So uh, square photos on Instagram came from that camera, and then filters came from that process in the darkroom of being able to add chemicals and change and shift the colors. Um, and when we designed the icon, the icon came from wanting to feel like an old vintage camera. And it was kind of ironic, because the most new, most advanced cameras were the cell phones people were holding in their hands. Um, and we wanted to be the opposite of that. We wanted to be cool and retro and vintage. So we looked at a bunch of really old cameras back in the day and kind of borrowed elements from all of them. Uh, and we made an icon out of it. Um, and still to this day, people think of Instagram as kind of cool and vintage and, and hip. Or at least I hope you guys do. Thank you for the question. Let's take our next question from St. Isidore School in California. It would be really cool to work for Instagram. What type of personality traits do you look for when you're hiring? Wow, good question. Um, well, number one, you got to you know, graduate from college, so you guys have a few years. Um, we, uh, we look for really, really smart folks. So we look for people that are driven um, and who have a demonstrated ability to create things. So oftentimes what we look for um, are people that throughout the last few years have been working on projects at home. They've launched their own apps. They've had ideas uh, for what they want to build. And they've done these one-off projects because it shows an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, and you have to be really smart and sharp to learn the skills to be able to do everything from think up the idea to code the idea to design the idea um, and then to launch the idea. So we often look for that in people. Um, we also look for humility. Um, and humility means uh, not being prideful, not being uh, too boastful. It's about being a team player and always trying to boost the work of others on your team rather than boost yourself. I think that's one of the most important qualities as well. Um, and just being a hard worker. I mean, as you know in school, uh, the people who are best in your class are often the people who study the most. Um, and that's true here at work, too. The people who do the best work are often the people who work the hardest. Um, because, you know, to launch an app to this many people and to have great ideas, you really have to put in a bunch of time and effort. Um, but I'd say maybe the most important personality quality uh, would be to be nice. We look for really nice people. Um, people who have smiles on their faces, people who uh, make everyone's day a little bit brighter. Um, and if you can do that, you're what we call a culture fit, um, and we like to hire you in here. So uh, graduate college, work really hard, have ideas, and be really nice. Those are the things. Thank you for asking. It's an awesome set of qualities. Let's take your next question from Fairhope High in Alabama. 
If Instagram hadn't become popular, what do you think you would be doing now? Um, that's a good question. I haven't really thought that through. Uh, the good news is Instagram did become popular, so um, I get to do this job, which is my favorite job on earth. Um, but if it didn't become popular, what I was doing at the time was teaching myself to code um, and working on startups. And honestly, I would probably be working at maybe another version of Instagram as an employee. Um, Silicon Valley is pretty awesome because there are tons of people with new ideas every single week and they always try to get people to work on their teams uh, and launch new ideas. So I'd probably be working at a startup. Um, I'd probably do my best to uh, be an engineer there or a designer. Um, and maybe if I was lucky, that startup would uh, affect as many people as Instagram was. But I'd be just as happy doing that as, as Instagram because you know working on ideas that touch millions of lives is kind of the dream of everyone here in Silicon Valley. Um, and the cool part is you've got a ton of folks here doing that every single day. Uh, so that's probably what I'd be doing. Let's take our last classroom question from Tanana Middle School in Alaska. Uh, Thanks so much. Can you tell us about a program or another social network that you've never released? A program that I've never used. Um, you know, I try to keep up with all the apps that launch. You guys are actually the best at doing this. So whenever I hear about a new app or a new social network, I'll hear about it from my cousins who are 11, 13, and 15. Um, because it turns out you guys are like the pulse of what's happening online, and you probably don't even know that. Um, you know, things like uh, like Snapchat and Photo and uh, Flippergram and a bunch of these other apps that kind of have become popular all started with fairly young folks um, and over time grew and became really popular. Um, you guys are a little young to remember this, but there was a day when Facebook didn't even exist. Um, and it started at colleges, actually, and it started with students. Um, and students, you know, used it before any grown-up did, and then they launched in high schools, and then they released it to everyone. But there was a time when only uh, college and high school students actually could use it. Um, so when I think about experiencing new apps that I've never used before, I often ask my young cousins what they use, um, and they always surprise me. But um, I love going to the App Store and downloading games from the charts. I look what's popular and, and see what's new. Um, I love music apps, I love games, I love apps that let you change your photos. Um, those are all the things that I focus on. Uh, and uh, if you have any ideas, feel free to send them to me. Great. So we have a couple of questions from Twitter, and Kate is going to ask them. Kate? Hello. Um, so our first question that we got from Twitter is, how do you measure the success of something you're involved in? Is it money or use or innovation or how longevity? How do you measure your success? Uh, I think it depends on the person, but I think it's a little bit of everything you just mentioned um, because they're all kind of tied up with each other. But at the end of the day, what matters most is like whether or not you feel fulfilled. Um, and for some people, that's you know, doing something positive in the world and changing people's lives for the better. Um, for some people, they really want to build a company and have lots of employees. Um, for some people, they want to make a living so that they can send their kids to college and so that they can, you know, um, give philanthropically. Um, I think it really depends on each individual person, but I think when you start an idea or when you start a company or when you start, you know, working somewhere, you should always ask yourself why. You should ask yourself, am I here because I want to make a difference? Am I here because I want to make a paycheck? Am I here because I want to learn? Um, and be really clear about your intentions because then at the end of the day you can ask yourself if you're actually meeting those goals or not. For me, Instagram actually initially was just because I wanted to work on my own and I wanted to have ideas and actually see them through and I wanted to learn the code. Um, and I did that through Instagram as well. I wanted to uh, work in social media and I wanted to see if we could create a service that lots of people enjoyed. Um, and the crazy thing is over the last five to six years we've done all of those things and 
it's just grown to an enormous height. And even now we ask ourselves, okay, what do we want to do in the next year? And like, how do we want to judge ourselves at the end of 2016? Um, is it creating a business that makes a lot of revenue? Is it creating a business that touches many more millions of lives around the world? Um, and we keep asking ourselves those questions every year to make sure that we're headed in the right direction. And I think everyone should do that, whether you're a student, an employee, or a founder. Excellent answer. And then we have our final question, also from Twitter. Um, can you tell us about a program or a product that you worked on but that you never released to the public? Yeah, there are actually, um, well, I released it to the public, but it didn't really go so well. So um, when I was in college, uh, I noticed a bunch of people in their dorm rooms, they have stuff at the end of the year that they want to give away. And I also noticed people want to buy things like fridges, um, they want to buy mattresses, they want to buy posters for their walls to decorate. Um, and there's this disconnect between people. Um, there was no marketplace. So I, I made something called, uh, the, uh, it was called Swap Swap, actually. And the idea was that you would swap goods with other people um, on college campuses. And I, I actually did launch it, and only about 200 people ever used it. Um, so it wasn't exactly successful. Um, it was a it was a small success compared to what Instagram ended up being, um, but it taught me a lot, uh, and that's why I actually think you know forget about like how much money a company makes or um, how many people it touches. Every single experience in your life, I think, helps you learn for the next experience or the next challenge down the road. Um, so sometimes you know I would get bummed when I launched something and and no one used it. Um, but looking back, had I not done those things, had I not had those failures, um, we wouldn't have learned the really important lessons that actually ended up making Instagram successful. And even today at Instagram, I mean, not everything is, is perfect. I mean, we have mistakes that we make. We launch um, things that no one uses, and we need to tweak them and make them better. Um, so always looking at mistakes or failures in the light of an opportunity to learn for the next time around, I think that's probably the most important um, lesson I've learned over the years. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us today and inspiring students around the world to study computer science. We appreciate you spending time answering these questions and sharing a little bit about your experience about the impact technology can have on our lives. So everyone, let's thank Kevin for joining us today. <laughs>